been a weird morning, really strange, because I've done all my settings to set up for the show today, and I've flipped around the camera so that that means that you can actually read what's on this screen. And what's particularly bizarre is that this lamp seems thinner. I seem thinner. Most people that know me will tell you I'm not this thin, I'm actually a bit wider, and that lamp is definitely wider. And not only that, not only that, but as I came down this morning, you can't see this right now, socks everywhere. Socks everywhere. Right. Well, I have, however, been working on some really smooth transitions to get the show a bit more, a uh, bit more uh, professional looking. And I've got a lot to get through this morning. Oh, can see a few people. Oh, hi there, folks. You okay? Hi, Lorna. You're okay there. See Heather's watching as well. And Lisa, morning to you all there. Well, so we've got lots to cover this morning. We're going to be looking at, well, I'll leave that to, uh, to show you in a moment. But without further ado, we're going to work on one of these really smooth transitions where we go from me talking and introducing right to the introduction. So, ready? Ladies and gentlemen, ensure your phones are switched off and take your seats for The Punctuation Show. Punctuation Show! Let me doing that. Right, oh, we've got loads to get through now just to put my comments on, see if we can get that to... Got that to oh, oh, there we go, fantastic. Uh, we've started there. Uh, there is a slight lag, so I'm going to try and see people. So, oh, hi from Joe, age 11 in Teesside. I've got lots of shout-outs to him. Morning, Nicole. Morning, Louise. Got lots of shout-outs to do from last week. Um, so, uh, what we're going to do is have a written down. Um, I will reply. Um, if you've watched the show before, you will see that I do try and reply to every comment that's made. Uh, I do do my best. Oh, hello from Bethan there. I think you might already be on the list. I'm going to go through my list because uh, got some uh, shout Shout outs to do this morning. Um, and we've got these, so these are the shout outs. Actually, no, I better, do, better go, do it right. Do it right. Go in the correct order. Um, well, welcome to Facebook Live again. We're at this time of the week. Um, you can follow at Punctuation on the following social media. We've got Twitter at Punctuation Show. We've got Insta at Punctuation Show. And also for the trendy dances. On TikTok as well, all at Punctuation Show. And we've got a TikTok challenge for what we've got going on today as well. So, without further ado, we're going to do the shout outs. So, shout outs for today. I've got them on a list on my phone. Professional, professional, always watching. So, shout outs for Miss Brevis at the Beechwood Park down there, I think, in Hampshire, that one. And for 11 year old Charlie. Bella and Bethany in Shropshire. Now, I know they're watching because they've just said hello. They've just messaged me to say hello. So, hi there, Bella and Bethany in Shropshire. Isla and Florence and Esther. Isla and Erin from Scotland. Uh, Jessica, age seven. Good morning there, Jessica. Isla in Elgin. I've seen that they're watching. A uh, shout out for to the Thornhill family. Uh, morning, Joanne there. Um, Yes, uh, Ellis is on there, definitely. Uh, Lucas and Lewis, Evan and Florence. Shout out to Bethan. Shout out to Freya and Oliver. Shout out to Evie, aged eight. Shout out to Joseph in Wickham. Shout out to Evie May. Shout to Bethan and Elise. Shout out to Orla. I think your mum's already been on doing her own Facebook Live this morning. Alex in Banbridge. Morning, Alex. A shout out to Maisie. Shout out to Lily. A shout out to Ellis in Wickham. And uh, there's a chat to your dad the other day about doing something similar, really. So tell him to get his skates on and get yourself on Facebook Live. Ryan in Durham, I think he was uh, going to tell me it was his birthday last week to get a shout out. Um, but it wasn't. But so you've got a shout out this week, Ryan. Um, Shy Ben's get now, as they say, in the northeast. Um, a shout out to Bryony and Ferry Hill. Having a chat with Bryony yesterday at the Ferry Hill. Uh, to Caris, morning Caris. Warden Hill Juniors down in Luton. I often visit Warden Hill uh, Juniors in the uh, Luton. I think, in fact, I think it's Warden Hill Primary School now, so we'll correct that. Morning there. And uh, so Joshua, aged eight. I don't know if I, I've, I've got someone aged eight on there, but morning Joshua. And um, where are we? So, ah, that's right. 
Eva, Isla and Jacob in Sunderland, just down the road in Sunderland, that's all good. Uh, Concert Infant School, so shout out to Concert Infants. Um, as you're all jumping on there, it's great to see you all coming on there. So Rebecca, hi Lee, Oliver, age 10, shout out to Oliver. If you can all do me a favour and press share on your computer screens now, if you can press share, that gets the word out, gets the likes there, and that means that when I'm giving you your shout outs, lots more people see it. So if you give us a like, give us a share, that would be fantastic. Now, uh, this morning, we've actually got our oh, morning Richie. Morning Richie, he's probably just come back from his run there. Good morning, Richie Eland there, my pal. And, uh, oh, hello from Mason. Oh, morning, Mason. My, old, my childhood friend, Tony Gawthorpe's watching. Morning, Tony. And Noah, age six from, St uh, is that Stockton? St I want you to stop. Uh, so Noah from Stockton, good morning. Right, well, I've got a couple of birthdays this morning. So, without further ado... Got lots to get through with the topic today. We've got lots going. Right, I'm hoping you can hear this at morning there, Sam. Morning, Gavin. First birthday song, we've got, well, I've got to say hi to the Looney family. I've got to Sophia. So a big hi to Sophia and a big happy birthday to Scarlett, who will be nine, who was nine yesterday. So first of all, to Scarlett. If you can all join in at home, that would be wonderful. Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday dear Scarlet, happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday dear Scarlet, happy birthday to you, hip hip, this way you all cheer, hip hip, hip hip. Happy birthday to Scarlet. Right, we've got another birthday, and this is going back to my homeland. Sounds like I'm really big, sort of like barbarian on an adventure, going back to my homeland, but to go back to Ghoul. Okay, back to Ghoul, where I'm from originally. It's God's country, except my daughter pointed out the other day it's not actually a country. But you get the general idea. So this is for Toby from Ghoul. Actually lives in my mum and dad's old house, so morning there, Toby. And he's 11 on Wednesday, which I presume means tomorrow. So again, for Toby, if you could all join in. Ready? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Toby. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Toby. Happy birthday to you. Hip, hip. Hip, hip. Hip, hip. There we go, fantastic. So that's the birthdays, the shout outs, and uh, there we go. So without further ado, I think we need one of those smooth transitions so that we can move on to what we're talking about today. And we're going to be taking a look at commas. Oh, yeah. Commas, ladies and gentlemen, now, there we go. Now, commas have actually got many uses. As we can see here, they help conjunctions join statements together. They can mark out the less important parts of sentences or be used for parenthesis. Okay, be used much the same as brackets and dashes. I will cover a little bit about that in, a, in a, a short while. They can separate subordinate and main clauses as well. Okay, so they can separate subordinate main clauses as well. And this is the most common one. They can also, as they're doing here, they can separate items in lists. The best way to remember it is they can separate words, they can separate phrases, and they can separate clauses, not main clauses. We will look at that in a short while as well. So, um, commas, first of all, because we, 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 I'm sure you all know about lists. Obviously, you put a comma after each item in the list. So we're going to be a bit more advanced. Because I, th I think we're quite clever now. We've got so Based on my shout-outs, I think we've got quite a few clever people watching. So we're going to look at commas used for parenthesis. And this is why we might use a comma in a similar way uh, to using them for brackets. Basically, commas used for parenthesis are placed on each side of what appears to be less important information in a sentence. Now, we're going to take a look at an example. Now, I've got a, a relatively simple example here. This sandwich made by my mother 
was tasty. Now we can see from that, this sandwich made by my mother was tasty. Fairly simple sentence, but we've got extra information. I could, I could have said this sandwich was tasty. That gets the same meaning across, but made by my mother is extra information in that sentence. So I'm going to put some commas on either side of made by my mother. And that's what we call an embedded clause. Okay, so this sandwich made by my mother, comma, either side of that clause there, was tasty. So there we go. And ladies and gentlemen, this is your time for interaction. I've got to, I think I've got things going on here. Okay. And it's your turn. That's right. Ladies and gentlemen, I need a clever person in this audience to put that, well, you obviously you can't put your hand up, but to write down, write down, type really fast on your mum or dad's laptop or iPad or your phone, type the answer to this question, where should the commas for parenthesis go in the following example? The football, a present from my dad, not that we're gender stereotyping at all, I've got to, my, my two daughters both play football. The football, a present from, that said I did actually buy their football, so yeah, there we go. Right, not very good at football myself. Anyway, getting on, getting on, getting on. The football, a present from my dad, was autographed by the England squad. Few people in Scotland watching there. Hope I've not upset anyone there. Right, ladies and gentlemen, get typing. Your time starts now! <laughs> Seamless swoop over to the, let's see, let's see, oh, uh, Claire Elizabeth there, a present from my dad, that's the first one I've seen, might not be the first one on there, but it's the first one I've seen, there is a, a slight delay, about 15 uh, to 20 second delay, the first one I've seen was from Claire Elizabeth there, who says, let's hope she got it right, around a present from my dad, so just after football and after dad, but is she correct? Ladies and gentlemen, the correct answer. She's absolutely correct, and lots of you are getting that right. Absolutely fantastic. Lots of you are getting that answer right, and that's wonderful. Absolutely fantastic. So, a couple come through. Oh, Joanne Cleverdon. Uh, well, there we go. Sky's got it right. Sky's got it, Sky's got it right. My daughter, Sky's friend, is still in bed. They complain that doing this wakes them up. That's what I'm working with here, folks. There you go. Right. So, there we go. There are our commas. The football. A present from my dad was autographed by the England team. We know we've got that right because if we were to take that information away, it would read the football was autographed by the England squad. Okay, that still makes sense. So there we go. And I mentioned the difference between commas and brackets. You could probably get away with putting brackets around what we've written there, which doesn't help with confusion, but basically, Commas, using commas around extra information or embedded clauses tends to, um, it tends to be better if it makes sense in the flow of the sentence. So if we were talking, the football, a present from my dad, was autographed by the England team. It's a little bit, flows a bit better uh, than like the football, a present from my dad. Brackets or dashes give more of an interruption like that. So I hope that clears up a few things like that. Oh, morning, Michelle Atkinson's watching. And uh, Michael's like, oh, well, fantastic. A bit of agreement there. And Stephen Shaw, shout out to the farmers over down in Castleside. Right. Remember, commas are usually the best choice for parentheses if you want to be more subtle in their use or their effect. Brackets and dashes cause more of an interruption in the sentence. If you want to really make that point, then use brackets or dashes. Uh, so there we go. And we're going to move on now. We're going to talk about a different use for a comma. Now, when marking separate clauses in a complex sentence, one of the clauses will be what we call a subordinate clause. A subordinate clause. Now, that part of the sentence doesn't make sense on its own. The other part of the sentence, of that complex sentence, so we've got our subordinate clause, we then have the next part of the sentence, which we refer to as a main clause. Now, a main clause is, grammatically speaking, identical to a short sentence. 
obviously it does make sense on its own. It's got its own subject, it's got its own verb. The difference between a main clause and a short sentence is that if a main clause is part of a longer sentence, it doesn't necessarily need a capital letter or a full stop, because that might be at the other side of, for example, another main clause or another subordinate clause. So that's the main difference there. And uh, let's look at it. It's also better, it's also better to show rather than tell. And, uh, and I think it's probably best to clarify with a subordinate clause. Why uh, They don't make sense on their own, and you shouldn't use them. You shouldn't use a subordinate clause on its own. Watch, watch. This is what happens when we use a subordinate clause on its own. Got an example here. During the lockdown. No one has a clue what I'm talking about. I've said during the lockdown, it doesn't make sense. However, if we add a main clause, if we join it with a comma, a subordinating comma, and a main clause, watch what happens. We get a sentence that makes sense. During the lockdown, my parents seemed to drink more. No, 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 not that kind of drink. Not that kind of drinking. I mean, obviously, they've been doing geo wicks. They need more water. 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 There. It's important to stay healthy. So, there we go. So, that's the other use for a comma. Joining a, uh, a, a subordinate clause to a main clause. Now, ladies and gentlemen... Once again, it's your turn, again, again. Okay, folks, so where should the comma go in the following sentence? Looking out across the river, I could see the sailing boats. Get ready to type, folks, get ready to type, because, once again, need to see your answers in the comments. Your time starts now! Ladies and gentlemen, let's see the answers. Oh, Louise Watkins has said after River. Oh, Joanne Simpson got in there, I think, just before. It's difficult to see. Morning, Richard James, who's just joined, my bass player chum. Oh, Heather, my ex-pupil there, moved down to... Good morning, Heather. Hope you're enjoying uh, living down in Essex, if you're actually still down. I was in Colchester the other week, actually. Um, you could have come round for tea. Anyway, on with business, folks. Where should the comma go in this sentence? Looking out across the river, I could see the sailing boats. The answers we've been getting in say after river. Let's see if they're correct. They're absolutely right. Give yourselves a round of applause if you got it right and let me know if you got it right in the comments. Absolutely fantastic. Looking out across the river, I could see the sailing boats. We've got our subordinate clause at the uh, top there and the main clause following straight after. Now remember folks, don't use a comma to separate two main clauses or short sentences. If you saw the second show that we did, you will already know that because we need to use a semicolon for that. But we have the dance just to help you prepare for the TikTok challenge this week. It's nice and simple. It's a sort of dance that old ladies do at uh, caravan clubs because they can't get their, their arms up any higher. All you need to do is go like this. That's it. Get mum and dad joining in. Fantastic. Here we go. Commas are punctuation marks with many applications. Let's look at some of the main ones to ease up on our frustrations. Commas will be used in lists to separate things out They go between the things you've listed And so there is no doubt Join in, come on! Lots of commas everywhere With so many duties Of all the punctuation marks They really are the beauties Lots of commas everywhere With many things to do I use them when I'm 
writing So make sure that you do too Come on, get those hands up The usual business of a car Is mainly separation Just like brackets You can use them Surround extra information They're also used to separate Dependent and main clauses Often they can sound like they are indicating pauses Join in! Lots of commas everywhere With so many duties Of all the punctuation marks They really are the beauties Lots of commas everywhere With many things to do Use them when I'm writing, so make sure that you do too. Commas help conjunctions join statements to each other. Words like but, because or so, maybe you can think of another. Make sure you don't forget to use everything you've learned. Including commas in your work Is the way respect is earned Join in! Lots of commas everywhere With so many duties Of all the punctuation marks They really are the beauties Lots of commas everywhere With many things to do Use them when I'm writing So make sure that you do too <sighs> Thank you very much folks Right, time to zoom in for an extreme close-up on the telly this week. What have we learned? Well, if you go to www.thepunctuationshow.com slash quiz, you can take the quiz based on commas, post your certificate, because you do get a We give you a certificate. We give you, it's not actually worth any money, but we give you a certificate, which shows you can, therefore, use a comma correctly. So, give us a, a, a get down to the, uh, the, the quiz section of the website, Post your certificate in the comments and show us how clever you are. Um, as well as that, now, the TikTok challenge. Okay, if you're on TikTok, um, the dance, well, whilst uh, I thought my moves were pretty smooth, naturally, he's, he's not really very good at comms. If you've got a better TikTok dance, if you've got a better TikTok dance, then please do, do the same challenge 
Yeah, they just all you need to do is search podcast revision on there and the comma song will come up. If you have enjoyed the songs, uh, they are available to listen to on iTunes or Spotify, whichever free music. You can listen to the songs again then. Um, they're all on there. Um, well, these ones are anyway. I'll let you know if they're not. Um, so, so, so feel free to listen to the songs again. So TikTok challenge, that's for you again this week. So do your quiz. Post me a video of your better comma dance uh, that you've done on TikTok. That would be fantastic. Um, if I could ask as well, if you have enjoyed the show this morning, if you could just hit the share button and uh, just basically, or if, if you're feeling really generous, ask your friends. I know Peter's doing some people's editing, but if you can ask friends to like the page, obviously. Um, we just want to, to, to grow the audience, make the show more for as, mu as much fun as we possibly can, get the shout outs there to a wider audience. All that's left for me is to say thank you so much for your support. You've been absolutely brilliant. And that's all we have time for until next week. Oh, and don't forget your free comic, folks. If you go to, now you don't get this, you, you don't just get this by going to the website. This is exclusive for Facebook Live. The punctuation show.com slash comic put that in you can download a comic and that covers that actually covers a listing comms as well so that's the uh, more appropriate to, as well for lots of younger viewers uh, that might enjoy the comic there so don't forget to the punctuation show.com slash forward slash comic and you can down a comic that's uh, going to support everything that we've done today so thank you once again for your support thanks for tuning in thanks for getting up in the morning and uh, and there we go fantastic thank you and hopefully see you next week